promises to be a very memorable night at Madison Square Garden begins now. For the next half hour, we'll recap one of the greatest careers the New York Rangers and their fans have ever seen. We have had thousands of athletes come and go here at Madison Square Garden. Some leave a mark and some don't. Now, you can leave a mark by winning, but you can leave a bigger mark, the kind that Mike Richter did by being more than just a champion. And tonight, the Rangers say thank you for being a champion, a great player, a great teammate, and a great guy. Let's go back and resume a look at his career, which started so long ago when, as a child, he knew what his destiny was. Hockey was a huge passion to me. I can remember that from a very, very early age. Uh, we wanted to play um, hockey at the highest level. A guy like Mike Richter comes along and redefines uh, athleticism in the Nets. When you think about the success that they had, especially in the mid-90s, you think about Mike Richter. If Mike isn't the type of goaltender or plays as well as he does, uh, the Rangers don't win a Stanley Cup. That's as simply put as that. Very few athletes have had careers as special as Mike Richter's. He was selected by the Rangers in 1985 and remained with the franchise his entire 14-year career. He holds just about every goaltending record in team history. That took skill, but it was his passion and work ethic that drove him to greatness. It's unusual to see just in, in any athlete, I would guess, uh, is that commitment to the total part of the game. Usually you have guys that work hard on the ice and may leave it there, or you have some guys that work hard in the weight room but don't see the ice as well, and he kind of combined everything. I don't think I've ever been around a goaltender that takes his job as serious as he does. He reads books, he goes and flies and sees people in the summer to make himself better, and he was always uh, thinking about his position and what he could do to become a better goaltender. And For a goalie, you really have to have a an ability to concentrate um, more than I think other positions and I don't know if that's a fair thing but you spend an awful lot of time by yourself um, in your own world uh, even as the game is being played but certainly preparation leading up to a game you know what your responsibilities are. Richter split time with John Van Beesbrook during the first four seasons of his career gaining valuable experience but when John left the job became his. There were playoff disappointments then 1994 happened. Goaltending definitely is something that any Stanley Cup team that has won has gotten. Mike played unbelievable. I think he had some kind of 20 or 25 game unbeaten streak going. Had tremendous amount of confidence and had played enough to realize that he was, uh, and he knew I think in, a, in his own mind that he was um, prepared to take a team through two months of the playoffs and win a Stanley Cup. When you get to three generations of hockey fans, that have not seen a championship, then the pressure mounts. And so for him to have accomplished what he accomplished in 94, it speaks volumes as to what kind of competitor Mike is and what kind of goalie he was. My most enjoyable time as an athlete, um, where the stakes are high, where everything in your life gets put on hold for this important moment. The whole hockey world is watching. And, uh, you know, it's a just a tremendous stage uh, on which to show your wares. Richter led the NHL with 42 wins, and the Rangers were the top seed in the Stanley Cup playoffs. After getting past the Islanders and Capitals in the first two rounds, they were facing elimination in Game 6 of the Eastern Conference Finals versus the New Jersey Devils. For the empty net, Mark Messier, do you believe it? Do you believe it? He said we will win Game 6. He has just picked up the hat trick. Mike Richter was as good as Mark Messier that night. He was incredible, and to me, uh, when you see a performance like that um, in New Jersey, uh, in a situation where you know we may bow out that night of the Stanley Cup playoffs, he just said, "No, this is my game, and Martin Brodeur is not taking it away from me." Because of the third period and uh, the three goals and uh, the hat trick and us winning the game and things like that, uh, what really got overlooked is that. Uh, Richter really was the story of that game. Here's a two-on-one for the Devils. McKay for Holik. Saved by Richter. Richard shoots. Save Richter. Rebound. Where's the puck? It's in the corner. Noonan's got it. Matteau goes for the puck. Matteau around the net. Matteau puts it. Score! Score! The Rangers win! The Rangers win! They're going to the finals! The Rangers win! Just four wins away from their first Cup in 54 years. It was Richter in Game 4 versus Vancouver facing the league's most potent scorer. Everyone on their feet at Pacific Coliseum. Here comes Bore against Mike Richter. Saved by Richter. What a save by Mike 
Every shot is enormous in, in the playoffs. I remember Keenan saying it was the most important save in my life or something like that, but it was only up until the next shot. With the series tied at three, Richter found himself fending off a furious comeback by Vancouver in the third and decisive period of game seven. The third period in the seventh game, uh, he looked like the only one that didn't uh, have legs that were seized up. The rest of us were kind of waiting for that clock to count down and he was uh, fantastic. just happens, starts to sink in. You've done what you set out to do um, your whole life, but particularly that year, it was the first uh, and it turns out the only year where you say, I fulfilled my goals for this season. But I can remember even holding the cup, skating around, and you want to hold on to it forever. I couldn't even keep my hands over my head. I was just physically, emotionally just drained. The U.S. born Richter also took headlines in international play. He was a three-time Olympian and anchored Team USA to a memorable 1996 World Cup win when he became the MVP. And up the line, dropping a shot. Oh, save, Hunter. He was just phenomenal. Not only against Canada, but against all the different countries. And you have to remember that's like an all-star team from each country. So they're the best players. This is different than the National Hockey League. And uh, he was just phenomenal and as good as you'd ever want to see any goaltender at any time. You don't get much bigger than New York City, but uh, the United States is. And that's, that's awesome. Every line you're facing somebody that's, uh, you know, a great goal scorer, a great playmaker. Um, that's exactly, I mean, you're looking at the best hockey has to offer. And so to play in those tournaments, it's, um, that's a huge, huge honor. The end of his career was marred by injury, yet he has more wins than anyone in franchise history. Now Richter's number 35 becomes only the third retired number in franchise history, next to Rod Gilbert and Ed Jockamitz. Post-concussion syndrome may have forced Richter to walk away early, but his legacy will last forever. I've only played with a couple players in my whole career that could actually shame people into playing harder and better because of uh, uh, what he brought to the game. He loved the limelight, he loved the, uh, the pressure of playing in the city and not too many players have uh, thrived here but he was one of them. For me it was just uh, you know a friend and a competitor and uh, someone that I just felt lucky to have gone through different stages of my uh, career and personal life with. But the most important thing to be remembered as, I think, as, as a player and as a person is, is how did you approach the game. There's a lot of things that you can't control. Whatever your talent level is, you better be uh, doing everything you can to max that out, to, to make yourself as good as you can be, because that's the only way that um, you can really honor your teammates and the fans and ultimately yourself. In September 2003, Mike Richter was forced to retire from the sport of hockey. In a moment, we'll take you to Lake Placid, New York, and show you what he's been up to lately. As we go to break, we take you back to 1989, when Phil Esposito tapped the rookie to start in the playoffs for the Stanley Cup. April 9th, 1989. Mike Richter makes his debut for the Blue Shirts in the playoffs. The rookie, Mike Richter, gets his first start in the NHL, and he starts game four for the Rangers. For Lemieux, he beats Petit on the play, he's in! Save, Richter! Big save for Mike Richter. Here's Lemieux's move on Michel Petit, and now in he goes, backhand side, and the quick feet of Richter make the save, and what a big save it was. More than 18,200 people making their way to the world's most famous arena for a marquee night. Some will glance up and see it from 7th Avenue. Everyone that enters at 8 Penn will see it for sure. The Empire State Building illuminated in red, white, and blue to aid in the salute to number 35. Welcome back. In September of 2003, Mike Richter, because of post-concussion syndrome, was forced to say goodbye to hockey. Every athlete at that stage wonders what they will do next. For Mike Richter, the destination became Lake Placid, New York. That's where we go now to update you on what Mike Richter has been doing since he made this very tough announcement. It's a bit of a confusing day for me. I feel uh, 
a great deal of sadness. Because I have to um, give up something that I, I truly love. I could never bring myself to imagine what the end of my career was going to look like. You know, how was I going to end it? It just never seemed to materialize in my head. I've, I think about a lot of things, and it's funny. It, it ends up happening whether you make it happen or not. It, it, it's over, and uh, I'm still in some ways coming to terms with that, as all athletes have to. I know what's first, and that is to get my health back. And I think the biggest thing was just the healing. Uh, it, it's quiet. I get my workouts in, you're outside a lot, which for whatever reason seemed to, uh, my body responded to better. Uh, I was just talking to my wife the other night, it was, you know, for a little while, you're working out 10 minutes a day, and then it you know, turned to 15 and 20 in half an hour, but it seemed like when I was outside and getting some fresh air, and it helped my sleep patterns, everything. So <clears throat> this place was ideal for that. That's the car Gagne. Morning Butch. Nice out today, huh? What's amazing is, uh, I mean, this was built, I think, in the 20s, and some of the outbuildings, uh, one there is late 1800s, and for us, you know, the winter's a good time to uh, get a lot of this kind of stuff done. I say good time because I'm not the guy who's up there doing it. My wife kind of laughs because I'm, you know, off to work each day, packing a peanut butter and jelly, but I'm basically watching, you know. Keep your head down because that looks like it hurts. <laughs> Attaboy, Jimmy. I value the time with my, my family. I value my alone time, and these are good places to come and just regroup. You know, I, I very much love the pace of Manhattan. I always, I think, live in New York, um, but it's nice to just get a little break from every once in a while. And you know, now the service is also uh, the building's getting a few updates, and I'm, I'm healing as well. So it's a good <laughs> kind of a metaphor where we're both uh, regrouping before the next stage of our uh, our own existence, right? Now, that's definitely ice, but it's not quite Madison Square yet. I, I appreciate how much work those guys have been doing over the years when you start from scratch. It's supposed to just find its own level and be nice and soft. The act of playing hockey itself, I mean, I did it when I was a kid. I, I did it because I loved it, and I still did it because I loved it, um, you know, up to 36 years old, and, and I would continue to do it forever, and I, I will. I'm not <clears throat> really allowed to play competitively anymore, but, <clears throat> you know, we're building a little rink out here, just skating and, and shooting a puck around is, is an awfully enjoyable thing, so there's, there's not a lot that I don't miss about it, to be honest with you. Leach, down the slot for the great movie. I can't help myself from watching every game I can get. You know, they're in a playoff fight, and I certainly know that feeling and, and, and rooting for them. And um, I think the hard part is you're not a coach. You're, you're not a player anymore. Um, you're that very odd in-between spot where you're not quite comfortable saying, I'm, I'm just basically a fan at this point. Really, uh, you get a sense for how intense it is when you're away from it more. And uh, I think I'm, you know, Quite a few times during the week, I'll be on the phone with somebody from the organization one way or another, and it's hard to sever that tie, and I don't think uh, I ever will, and I don't want to. Well, we know one thing. When Mike Richter is done renovating that house, it'll be the best darn house in all of Lake Placid. As we go to break, we take you to the All-Star Game in 1994, when Mike Richter made a save that he would use later to win the Stanley Cup. January 22nd, 1994, New York City. Mike Richter is named the All-Star Game's most valuable player in front of his home crowd. Oh, breakaway possibility, here comes Foray on a breakaway. And he was stopped, and the goal was knocked off its pegs. Mike Richter makes the save on Pavel Foray. Now Mike Richter, this is the first shot he's faced, it's a breakaway, beautiful pass, Foray goes in. The right leg of Richter will hit the goalpost in behind. Great save.
rookie, Mike Richter, gets his first start in the NHL, and he starts game four for the Rangers. What a save! The second star should be Richter. Saved by Richter of beauty! And the third star should be Richter. <laughs> this guy's been unbelievable. Really shot coming up from Pavel Bure. He and Mike Richter. What a momentous situation. and gentlemen to a very special night for the New York Rangers organization and Madison Square Garden. You know I've been thinking a lot about what tonight means. <laughs> You're the greatest. You know, I've been thinking a lot about what tonight means, not just for Mike Richter and the Rangers, but for all of us here tonight. And once again, I am humbled that we are making history. We are bestowing the greatest honor this organization, this building can bestow on one of the finest gentlemen to ever don a Rangers jersey. Because tonight, we do not just celebrate the winningest goalie in New York Rangers history. We do not just pay tribute to the acrobatics of those nights in June 1994 when he and his teammates brought New York a Stanley Cup. We do not just, we do not just applaud a proud American who helped bring the United States a World Cup championship and a silver medal from the Olympics. We do not just say thank you to one of today's rare professional athletes who spent his entire career with one team. He wore his trademark Liberty mask with the reverence and pride of a man humbled by his good fortune. We do not just revisit moments from his 15-year career when he defined what it meant to be a Ranger both on and off the ice. Tonight we do something that has been done twice, only twice, in the 78-year history of the New York Rangers. Think of all the Ranger players who have proudly worn the red, white, and blue. Think of their contributions, their commitment, their connection to the New York Rangers and their fans. We remember them all. But just two players after tonight, and after tonight three, will have the great privilege of living in this world-famous building forever. After tonight, only three Rangers players will ever have been acknowledged as meaning so much to this organization, to this building, to this city, that they deserve Madison Square Garden immortality. Tonight, Tonight, Mike Richter becomes a part of history and his number 35 goes to the rafters as one of the greatest Rangers of all time. A number of alumni have joined us here tonight to help celebrate this very special occasion. 
First, we introduce four career Rangers who, like Mike, played their entire careers as Broadway Blue Shirts. He played 14 seasons in New York beginning in 1968, centering the popular Bulldog line, currently fifth on the Rangers' all-time list for scoring, Walter Kachuk. first round draft pick in the 1971 entry draft. In 1973, he was Rookie of the Year, averaging 25 goals per season with his 10 years in New York. Welcome Steve Vickers. the top defensive forward in the history of the Rangers. He played 10 seasons in New York, all the way from Sweden, Jan Eriksson. At the age of 19, he began his NHL career with the Blue Shirts. Second in all-time goals by a defenseman, a Ranger through and through, Ron Greshner. And now a few Rangers who will live in our hearts forever. He scored two game-winning goals against Vancouver in the 1994 Stanley Cup Finals. Welcome, Glenn Anderson. A fan favorite and true team player from the 1994 team, hard-nosed winger Nick Kiprios. for scoring double overtime goals in games three and seven of the 94 Eastern Conference Finals. That put the Rangers into the Stanley Cup Finals. Stefan Matteau. synonymous with Rangers hockey both on and off the ice. His number seven was the first to be retired by the Rangers, the incomparable Rod Gilbert. Broadway, an 11-year Rangers veteran, Hockey Hall of Famer, and only the second 
of you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to Garden Vision as we celebrate the unmatched career of number 35, Mike Richter, and the times like these that we will never forget.
ladies and gentlemen. Here to share his thoughts on Mike Richter, please welcome his teammate for 11 seasons, Adam Graves. Adam? I'm so privileged to be here tonight to honor Mike Richter, the player, and more importantly, Mike Richter, the person. As a player, Mike was committed to being the best. Whether it was a drill, a practice, or a game, he would defy you to score. When we stood at center ice, when we stood at center ice and we looked back into that net and we saw this guy in between those pipes, we knew we had a great chance to win that game. I had the great pleasure of playing with and against some of the greatest goaltenders, not only in my time, but of all time. And recently I was asked a question. The question was, if you're going into a Game 7 Stanley Cup Final, who would be your goaltender of choice? The bigger the game, the better this man played. Some of my fondest memories of Mike was arriving in the locker room early in the morning, and I can say this on behalf of all my teammates, to see his smile, to see his interesting views on various issues, good and bad, and to see and to hear his well-timed humor. But most of all, it was his desire, his excitement for life, and it, his undying and relentless love for the game of hockey. Mike, on behalf of all your teammates over your great career, congratulations. On this, the highest of honors. We wish you, Veronica, Thomas, and James, all the best of everything good in the future. And now, Mike's teammate and close friend, Captain Mark Messier, will speak on behalf of his teammates. Mark. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, Gravy said just about everything there is to say and so much more. And I won't take up too much time because we don't have a lot of time. And even if I did have more time, I probably don't have the vocabulary to tell you exactly what I think and how I feel about Mike. It's, uh, it's been an incredible journey for myself, being a part of uh, the New York Rangers and Mike Crichter's career. And on behalf of the organization and my current teammates, I want to say thank you. And I also want to say thank you to 18,000 or so fans that are here that probably will never have a chance to come up here.
who I know would, wa would, would want to be down here right where I'm standing right now and personally thank you. So on behalf of all you folks, all the fans in New York and all the others that are watching on TV, we'd all like to say thank you, Mike, for what you've done. And one last, one last thought is that when your sweater is raised to the rafters, I want it to be a symbol of what it takes to be a champion, what it's like to act like a champion, what it's like to play like a champion, and the heart and perseverance it takes to be a champion. And every time past, present, and future Rangers put on this sweater, when they look up there, they'll know what a champion shows to look like. Thank you. And now, from your former teammates, Jan Eriksson and Nick Kiprios, they are presenting Mike with a silver-plated goal net, one that Mike actually played in front of at the Garden here, and it's inscribed with the names of all 219 players that Mike played with over his 15-year career, 15 career with the Rangers. Before you head off to Yale, we know you'll be spending time in Lake Placid and will rely on water transportation to get you from place to place. Well, the Rangers organization and your teammates want to make sure that on the water you're able to get around. Please turn to the Zamboni Gate as we present you with a reproduction of a 1940, 19 foot mahogany Chris Craft runabout. By the way, on the back of it, it is named True Blue 35. Again, that was a reproduction of a 1940 Chris Craft. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to hear from our guest of honor. Please welcome Mike Richter. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> thank you. Obviously, uh, the organization to be honored like this from this particular organization with its rich history and level of class that I've always so admired. And for them to come through tonight with this, 
is absolutely overwhelming. <laughs> right about now, I'm wondering whose idea it was to get a guy who has retired from head injuries to memorize a speech in front of 18,000 after that. <laughs> I thank you. Thank you. In, in the year that has passed since I played my last game, I've grown to be able to get a bit of a perspective on what this career has meant to me. I can tell you that I can tell you that any sense of loss has been replaced with feelings of gratitude and joy. I'm leaving with a realization that this time spent here has been nothing short of an amazing gift. Thank you. This experience has taught me many lessons, created warm memories, and has been shared with so many fine people that made it possible. There are too many people, there are just simply too many people that I'm indebted to, to properly acknowledge. So I offer this story in the hopes that it, all, it gives you some perspective on what I'm feeling. New Year's Eve, 1989, I was called up from the miners in Flint, Michigan. I arrived late in the evening, spent my last dollar on a cab fare coming into the city. I went to bed without eating as things were closing up for the New Year's celebration, famished. Now, my pregame preparation back then was not quite as evolved as it was now, is now, but it did usually involve eating. <laughs> I got up the next morning without a dollar in my pocket or a clue and basically begged a man on the corner of Delhi with a story about how I am actually a member of the Rangers organization. <laughs> and this afternoon's game is going to be my big break. He said very, very little, and after a long pause, asked me one thing, where are you staying? I walked back to the room, prepared my things to go over to the game. The door rang, and there's a delivery man with a warm ham and cheese omelet and an orange juice, which to this day may be the best meal I've ever eaten. I never, I never returned to that minor league team in Flint, but I never forgot his gesture. And yes, Leachy, I did pay him back. <laughs> and so it has been throughout my career, especially here in the city of New York. A series of challenges, sometimes small, sometimes large, but always with somebody helping me along. This nourishment has come in many, many forms. A brother's encouragement, a teammate's advice, a trainer's help in hand. They may seem insignificant at the time, but the fact of the matter is, I would not be standing here tonight without that support.
So when I say thank you tonight, the you I'm speaking of refers to, to a tremendous support system that I've had. It includes this incredible franchise, the Rangers, my teammates, past and present, the great athletes they are, and great human beings. I've had a loving and support of mom and dad. Thank you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, and of course my wonderful wife Veronica and my two boys, Tommy and Jim. But in particular, I want to thank the fantastic, and I mean fantastic, people of New York. Your passion, your loyalty, and above all, your generosity is unmatched. I am proud to have represented you and prouder still to call so many of you my friend. I will miss playing this great game for sure. But the real gift of the lessons learned, the warm memories created, and especially the friendships forged along the way. These will endure, and as Sam Rosen said, will last a lifetime. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank all of you for your support and help in this journey. Thank you. Mike for your eloquent words. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike's wife Veronica and their sons Thomas and James. They will now be escorted by Eddie Jockman and Rod Gilbert toward the 7th Avenue goal for the rising of Mike's number 35 banner. Veronica.
honor and privilege to host this ceremony and, and share this stage with distinguished Rangers alumni, the Richter family, and the man we came to celebrate tonight, Mike Richter. On behalf, on behalf of the entire Rangers organization, we wish Mike and his family health and happiness in the days ahead. You will live in Madison Square Garden and in our hearts forever. Thank you. Coming up, it's all in the family as the Blue Shirts honor this walker, New York Ranger. The good times continue as RJ and the Nets remain dynamite since saying hello Larry. And cheers to this New Jersey high school star who's taking a quantum leap into big time college football. Hey, 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 it's no rerun. We've got what's happening next on the MSG Sports Desk. Coming to a TV set near you, it is the MSG Sports Desk presented by Toyota. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kurt Menefee. And I'm John Giannone. I can't believe Hello Larry and cheers in the same sentence. 845 players have worn a Ranger uniform since the team's inception in 1926, so it's easy to understand why overwhelmed would be the perfect word to describe Wednesday's Man of the Hour. Yeah, what better place to begin than a fitting finish to the hockey days of one of the all-time good guys in sports. The Rangers officially honored the career of number 35 before tonight's game with the Minnesota Wild and before sellout crowd and several of his former teammates including Adam Graves who got the second loudest ovation for one last time Mike Richter left the Ranger locker room and led the blue shirts onto the ice this time as part of the ceremony honoring him his legendary 14-year career as a blue shirt and all that he has meant to the New York Ranger organization needless